This lesson we'll take a look at the cosine law and I'll show a couple of examples how to use it to, uh, to find sides and triangles. But first we're going to derive the cosine law. What that means is to develop the cosine law formula from previous mathematics. And if you take a look at the triangle in the top right hand corner here, I have the um, angles labeled uh, A, B, and C, and of course the sides opposites are the lowercase counterparts to those capital letters. We normally use a capital letter for angles, a uh, lowercase letter for the side opposite. So for example, this is angle B here, so across here is side B. This is angle C, so that's side C. Angle A is at the top here, so the one across the bottom is called side A, lowercase a. Now in this triangle, I'm going to label um, the bottom in, I'm going to divide it into two parts, not equal parts. Uh, the only way they'd be equal is if this is a sausage triangle and B and C were the same, but they do not necessarily have to be the same for this to work. So I'm going to call the distance from angle B to where this uh, altitude or hypotenuse comes down, I'm going to call that X. And whatever X is and whatever A is, we would subtract those two to find this distance here. So I won't introduce another variable for the distance from where this altitude comes down to C, but it would be whatever the whole distance is minus X. So A minus X is that distance there. Now, we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem in the uh, triangle on the left here. The sides are C, that's the hypotenuse, H and X are the two legs, they're shorter sides. And so Pythagoras' theorem says that H squared plus X squared would equal C squared, and that's Pythagoras' theorem there. Now also in this triangle, um, I'm going to write the cosine of angle B is the adjacent X side over the hypotenuse C. Uh, X is the adjacent side in this triangle, C is the hypotenuse, so the cosine of angle B is equal to X over C. Now I'm only writing the cosine ratio, I don't need the sine ratio, I don't need the tan ratio or any other trig ratio because this is the cosine law, that's why I'm writing the cos ratio. Now if we take that and multiply both sides by C like this, So we're multiplying both sides by C. Then these C's divide out and we get X is equal to C cos B. And so uh, cross multiplying, a lot of people call it cross multiplying, X equals C cos B. Now, using Pythagoras' theorem again, but in the triangle on the uh, right side here. Uh, in that triangle, uh, B is the hypotenuse, the longest side, so B squared would equal, equal the H squared plus the uh, A minus X squared side on the bottom. And if we expand out A minus X squared, remember that means an A minus X times another A minus X, and uh, it would look like this. This is what we're actually doing to expand that out. Uh, A minus X squared means two of these a minus x is multiplied. So if we expand them out, uh, a times a is a squared. a times the negative x is minus ax. Uh, this negative x times this a is another minus ax. And this negative x times negative x is plus x squared. Now these are like terms. They would combine to give you this minus 2ax in the bottom. And of course, that's the a squared there and that's the x squared there. So that's where that a squared minus 2ax plus x squared comes from. Now, uh, we're getting close to what the cosine law is here. We're going to make a couple of substitutions. So first of all, I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to write the h squared and the x squared together, and then the a squared minus 2ax on the end. Now notice I changed the h squared and x squared into a blue color and that's because up here h squared plus x squared equals c squared. So that's a substitution I'm going to make in a moment. And also the x here in the end, uh, I changed it to red because x equals c cos b. So I'm trying to draw your attention to the fact that that's a substitution I'm going to make. So in place of the x, h squared plus x squared, I put c squared. And in place of the x here, I put c cos b because that's what x equals c cos b. So b squared equals c squared plus a squared minus 2ac cos b. And that is the cosine law for, to, well, for, it's solved for b squared. You can actually solve it for any side squared. It doesn't have to be b. Notice the pattern here, though. If I'm finding side b, 
then I need to know the other two sides A and C both and notice that the two sides that are after this two is are the A and C so whatever these two sides those are the same sides the angle I need to know is the one opposite the side I'm finding so if I'm finding side B I need to know angle B now so there's the cosine law and I've uh, written just a plain triangle down here gotten rid of uh, the H and the X and the A minus X and so uh, B squared equals C squared plus A squared or A squared plus C squared doesn't matter minus 2AC cos B if we wanted to instead write it for A uh, side A squared would equal B squared plus C squared the other two sides again minus BC notice same two sides as here and times the cosine of A angle opposite the side we're finding if we want to write it out for side C, C squared would equal A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. Again, these are the two sides that are the same sides as here. And if I'm finding side C, I need to know angle C. Now, notice that this actually looks a fair bit like Pythagoras' theorem. A lot of people write Pythagoras' theorem with sides A, B, and C. C squared is A squared plus B squared. This, is, this really is, the cosine law really is Pythagoras' theorem with a correction. This is really the correction because it's no longer a right triangle. Uh, if, if this was a right triangle and angle C was 90 degrees, the cos of 90 is 0, and then this term disappears. And you actually just get the plain old Pythagoras' theorem. Now, before we get into a couple of examples, if I'm finding, let's say I'm finding side C. Okay, that's the side I'm finding. I need to know A and B. So if this is the side I want to find, notice that I need to know this side and this side. And I need to know the angle opposite the side I'm finding, which is this side here, this angle here. So in, in order to use the cosine law to find any side, you need to know the other two sides and the angle between them. So for example, if I were finding, let's say, a was the side I'm finding then I need to know the other two sides and the angle between them so that's the scenario that you use the cosine law for to find sides if you know any two sides and the angle between them you can find the other side the side opposite that unknown that known 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 angle so let's take a look at a couple of examples the first one here says a surveyor measures the distance between her location and two points near the side of a river. So the surveyor's here, and she's uh, she knows this distance. That's 583 meters, and this distance along this side of the river is 450 meters, and the angle between them is 17 degrees. And uh, what she wants to find is the distance across the river. So it says determine the width of the river from her measurements. So this is a classic cosine law question. We know two sides and the angle between them, so we can use the cosine law to find the third side. So I'll introduce um, side labels and angle labels on the triangle. Call this angle A, B here, and C here, and then the, the corresponding sides. And so we're trying to find side A. So it would be A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. And so we fill in the uh, values for B and C, sides B and C, and the uh, angle A is 17. So side B is the 450, side C is the 583, here and here as well, and angle A is 17 degrees. And we would take our scientific calculator and evaluate all this. Now, one, one precautionary thing. Um, if you remember order of operations, this must be evaluated this whole thing after the 2, 2 times 450 times 583 times cos 17 before you can subtract that from whatever this works out to be. So in your calculator evaluate 450 squared and 583 squared and then do this whole product 2 times 450 times 583 times the cos 17 and then you can subtract that from that and you'll get this number and then of course to find what A is we just take the square root of the 40,615.89 and you should get that side to work out to, well, this is 201.5, so it's about 200 meters across the river between points B and point C. Uh, last example says solve the triangle. Now, solve the triangle means to find all unknown sides and angles. 
And so notice that we have side F here and we have side E and the angle between them. So we could use the cosine law to find side D. So to find side D, we would write D squared equals E squared plus F squared minus 2EF times the cosine of D. Again, that's the angle opposite the side we're finding. And we'll fill in all the values. E is 5.8 and F is 6.3. And the uh, angle for D is 31. So we put uh, 31 in place of angle D. And again, we would evaluate all of this. Now, when we get to this point, this is what the calculation looks like. Uh, I want to evaluate the 5.8 squared. So 5.8 squared plus 6.3 squared and that will give me a certain value. Now uh, what I was talking about in the last example you have to make sure you do the 2 times 5.8 times 6.3 times the cosine of 31 and that's that value. So then we would go 73.33 minus the 62.64 about 2 etc. So that's where the 10.688 comes from. So if we go back to the slideshow. That's where the 10.688 comes from. Now in order to find uh, D, we would take the square root then of the 10.688. And side D is about 3.3 kilometers. So that's this side right here. So we'll label that on the diagram. Now we have all sides, so we want to find the other two angles. Remember, that's what solve the triangle means. So we would use the sine law to do that. Actually, there is a way to use the cosine law to do that, but that's beyond the scope of this lesson. We're not going to worry about that here. So, for example, if I want to find side, sorry, angle E, I know the side opposite, and I know this angle and the opposite side pair. So I could use the uh, side D, angle D pair, and E and E. And so there's my sine law. So uh, side E is the 5.8. Uh, angle D we just found was, is 30. Uh, so we uh, know it's 31 degrees. We found side D is 3.3. And so we uh, cross multiply and solve for sine E. Sine E is the product of 5.8 and the sine of 31 divided by the 3.3 side. So we would evaluate this. That's about 0 0.9052. And then in order to find angle E, we would take the inverse sine of that. And so in your scientific calculator, angle E works out to be about 65 degrees. So this is 65 degrees here. Now the simplest way to find F is to just subtract the 65 and 31 from 180 because in any plane triangle all three angles add to 180. And so angle F is about 84 degrees. And then the triangle is solved.